Good morning, everyone. Are we on the uh, web page, web screen? Yes. Okay. Phil's recording us. I'm sorry. I just want to remind everyone to set up straight. <laughs> <laughs> I have Okay, it's uh, 9 o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Sam has a uh, business trip, and I think I have been asked to step in for him this morning. So, uh, we have two guests here today. You, you want to introduce them to everybody? I think everybody the names now. Uh, this is Leanne from the Bond. She's manager of the Bond Agency. I uh, can't pronounce her last name. Karasi. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Steve Gaston from SDP Consulting. Very great. Um, the first item this morning is the approval of the agenda. That motion, please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right. Let me read the ethics statement right quick. In accordance with General Statute 18B201. It is the duty of every board member to avoid both conflicts of interest and appearances of conflicts. Does any member have any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict with respect to any matters coming before the board today? If so, please identify the conflict or appearance of conflict and refrain from any undue participation in the particular matter involved. All right, we're good? All right, next on the agenda is our presentation on the ABC software. Is that going to be you, Jackie, heading that up, or Lloyd? Steve is going to go up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I plug in here? Um, That's a great question. Bill, how does this thing work? So look up? Yeah. Yeah, there's the uh, there's an HDMI cable in the center. Uh, Got it. Um, yep. Of the table. Got it. Just grab that and plug in. It should be, should be all right. Do I have to change the and input? Then, uh, yeah, the, the Roku remote, you want to switch it to hit the home button. I think it's a little house in the top right hand corner of the remote, and then you can click on the uh, streaming box input. Oh, maybe. 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 I'm Steve. Uh, I've been servicing the North Carolina ABC boards for, since 1999. Um, been there for a while. Branched out of my own three years ago and uh, developed my own software that I tried to make as simple as possible. Make it easy to use without having you guys go through a whole lot of headaches. Um, I overheard something about having to be there at month end to post sales, things like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that happens on my, everything's live. Uh, as you do sales, it's there. Uh, your month then you just come in and run reports whenever you need to. That's it. No, you don't just definitely have to There's do it at the end of the month. No, no turnarounds. Um, everything is uh, date sensitive. So all of our reporting is that way. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no end of day, week, month reports at night. Price changes are automatic. Price changes are automatic. They happen for you automatically. You don't have to do them. Uh, you don't have to send anything to NAVCA because it does it automatically. Oh, wow. Um, cool. Yeah, it, it, it works pretty good. So uh, I'll actually be talking with NAVCA at the conference. Are you ever going to the conference? Uh, well, I'll be speaking with them on a lot of this stuff uh, that we've kind of made automated for people. Um, but this is the uh, register software. I want to kind of go through it real quick with you guys, just show you what we do have uh, as far as uh, how that works. You have mixed coverage and you don't, right? I don't. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is the screen. The this is what the clerks would okay, see. Great. Um, they would touch their login, ask for their clerk number, put it in a beginning balance, which I'll zero, and they're in the sales screen. That's already quick and easier. Right. <laughs> um, I love that screen. <laughs> Uh, we've got the birthday at the bottom right, let you know, you know, things like that. Um, our tech, uh, tech support number is at the top, so if you do run any issues, right there. Um, and I'll just kind of show you, they're ready to ring up, so if they scan the bottle, it's there. Uh, you have the quick keys over here, those are for cash quick keys, so they're smart keys. So if I, you'll notice the $20 key is there. Mm -hmm. It goes away because the total is greater than twenty dollars. 
So, um, they can sell it by hitting like the button. <laughs> so, um, and that's it. So, I, I did a sale earlier. So, if I hit reports, you'll see at the bottom there's all the transactions you've done, and you can highlight those, and it'll tell you at the right what was in that sale. And then you can just hit print, and it'll print a receipt for that. Oh, that is fantastic. I wish I was that now. <laughs> very, very mm -hmm. easy. Um, anybody could do that. Um, you don't do adjustments and transfers, but if you if you did, it would be at the top right. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, so that's I mean, that, and that's pretty much it. Training usually takes me about five minutes. We just installed Carteret County. It was five minutes per store. I got their old system. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. Um, so no, I'm not that. <laughs> no. All right, mixed beverage. For you, you're, this is something new. Uh, you click there, and you see there's Steve's Steve awesome bar. <laughs> so I'm going to create a mixed beverage album. It looks just like a sales drink. So they ring up bottle, and it's mixed beverage pricing. Mm -hmm. um, all the way through, you can print. That'll print the invoice. One, two, three, fifty copies, however many you need. Um, if a customer comes up, you can just hit save, you're right back in the sales group. Uh, that's right there. Okay. Immediately. <laughs> you can come back, pick that order, and open it, and continue on. Just like that. So I had viewed it at Price Books and so I was already like Yeah. Oh, it is. It's it's really it's designed to be as easy as possible. Um, so I finished that, it's a check, we're done. That sale's finished. So let's say it was supposed to be cash or a credit card. Okay. I could just come back to mixed beverage, go to history, and I'll see I have a mixed beverage there. I can unpost it, pull it back up, and then do it as the correct amount. So that's uh, the best way quicker. I mean just Yeah. Easy easy, easy to correct. And quicker. Yeah. Um your auditing, you can audit by anything pretty much. Select your date range, it'll yeah, I'll show you all of the items. Like, if I search by code, it'll show me all the items. I can click on one of the transactions, hit print. It'll print a receipt for that transaction so you can see it. Um, it'll show you uh, any of the mixed beverages. They're all right there. Uh, CC Trans. I'm not connected to uh, the gateway, but that will show you all of the transactions for credit cards that went to the bank. So you'll know if. Somebody says, well, you charged me twice. You can just click right there. No, I didn't. Oh, oh I like that. that yeah. yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that, um, that would be very useful. Yeah, it's listed all, all right in there. I love the tabs. It's right there. Yeah, they're, they're all right there. Um, and then, of course, you have reports you can run. Mm -hmm. Like a daily financial sales report would just be a combination of all the clerk's reports together for your deposit. Right. That would be good for Jackie. Can I see yeah. it on it? Uh, no, because it prints. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, is it? It's that. That's what it is. Is it, yep. is it, is it three or four pages? Is it sales tax? Oh. It tells you the sales tax. Uh, do you sell wines and mixers? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll tell you the wines and mixer tax as well. But it tells you the sales tax. It tells you uh, the, the uh, total sales. It splits out mixed beverage, cash, credit check. Um, keeps us in a separate uh, group, tells you the number of bottles sold in retail, the number of bottles sold in mixed beverage, and what the net deposit should be, and any loans or pickups you did for that day. Should y'all do loans and pickups? Since reboot, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you wanted to reboot, you just click reboot and it'll do it for you. That's for the credit card Right, yeah. Well, yeah. I have a lot of problems with my credit card well, That's why I'm uh, asking. So you have Tempest. Yes. Terminals, yeah, they're horrible. Um, we use uh, Inge we use the same in Genicos, but we don't have that issue because we use a different gateway. Okay. And the way the credit card processing works, I'm sure when you switch, did you are you still with EPI or did you go with? We're, we're now with e is that the electronic? Net, we're now with EPI. We were with Heartland for years because they're right. Right. Yeah. But they pretty much required us to switch. Yeah. We so, okay, I didn't know if okay. he put you on his special platform. Or not, so. Um. But with EPI, you're with EPI as well, since you're with Tempest, uh -huh. obviously. Um, 
the you don't have that rebooting issue most likely um we have to manually do it because they'll look, when it's more busy they'll lock up and we have to yes. they we have to go and hit a bunch of little yeah have no buttons. idea yeah have no idea and it happens happen. all the time i knew it was happening yeah. with carolina davis stuff it, mine, that doesn't yeah. happen with mine at it'll all. decline cards um and then they're not really declined so they have to go to the um the desktop and you have to like look to see if it really went through and yeah okay and then you can't reprint receipts so it's, yeah we've had some uh, issues okay do you have uh, the touch screen? <laughs> no. Okay. Good for you. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's so that's kind of how it works. Um, but yeah, we don't. The, the credit card processing is is through EPI. Mm -hmm. It's through Steve Rose. Um, mm -hmm. We use it in Genico Terminal. It takes Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, everything. Uh, oh, we got people wanting to do it. You can't oh, do that either. Which one is it? We can't. Oh, you can do Samsung Pay because um, it mimics a. Uh, one register will not let you tap. Mm -hmm. You can do everything. But one register will. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I, so we'll re we would replace that uh, and to to our gateway, and it's pretty pretty easy. Um, I've never had anybody call and say that it needs to be rebooted. That's that's never happened. So um, not that I know of. Maybe one of my pets could tell me otherwise, but mm -hmm. um, I've never had that. And it's just three years going. I have never seen one where you could actually pull up the, the credit cards like that and go mm -hmm. and tell somebody like, no, you weren't. I mean, right, yeah. right then and there, without having to call the credit card yeah, company itself, so so that is crazy. It won't, they it won't have data. Yeah. <laughs> we're not so, twice. so this is what it looks like. You could actually reprint the credit card receipt from here. Oh wow! And it shows you the total number of tra transactions at the top right. So your visas, Mastercards, everything. So you'll know your split, um, and that all of that data comes directly from the bank. So, or from the gateway. So, um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's simple. Okay. You, so, how do we? If I'm not at the store and I need to get all that detail, what does that? Look what like? detail do you need? I want the sales report. I want all of that, like cash, sales tax. You're talking from IMS. You, you call it something different than what? Yeah. Uh, my, I, want those da I want the daily ticket detail from the okay. website. So for the credit cards only? No. no. For everything? All, like like a clerk report, like for okay. the sales for the day. So that would be what in our back office program itself. That is IMS. Okay. Do um, we get access to them? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, this is part of the package. Okay. So um, this would be everything. It's live data. This is everything as they're doing it. So I just rang up those sales if I came back and did another sale. So is she even wanted to go in and see, I'm just curious, if she wanted to go in and see, well, let's see what they did this first hour. She could do that right then and there? Yeah, I have hourly reports in here. You can see that Thanks. as well. Um, but you see the totals change. What but reports did she get done then? Okay. Is that the month before? These are, uh, Hour, there's an hourly sales report. These are your end of month reports. Mm -hmm. They again, live data. So if you wanted to print your spiritus liquor tax form, uh, you just choose your date range, hit generate. And oh, that's that's you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right there. Look at that. It's already it is the correct form. I told right. them I, a certain person from Cellcom that I couldn't use the form that they automatically generate. Yeah. He goes, yeah, you can't. I said, no, you can't. I said, the, the, the uh, state will not accept it. And I still have, that's why I manually print it and do it, still do it from right. the report. And that one you can just send right on in. Right. So. Uh, <coughs> Rehab report. This one will look a little off on my laptop. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, this. What? Look at that. <laughs> so all of that is there, <laughs> and you just run this anytime mm -hmm. you need. So okay, I, I'm gonna have to wait for you to give me. I know. No, you can pull it up immediately. I mean, this it it automatically it. generates for you, so you're gonna calculate my Every, bottle tax. Everything. It's all right. There. I am okay. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't have to worry about waiting to send NAFTA because again, mm -hmm. the end of month stuff it is does done that for you. So it would do everything for me, like because I do all the paperwork. I, you know, I am the finance officer also. So you'd have a lot more time. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, I still have to send a bottle report for you right now. You yeah, I have really to calculate mine too. Um, so, like, can I see the stock value? Okay. So we have a couple of different options for the stock value report. Um, that's, that's more what Jackie would need. So I don't, I don't know if I have the data in here. For I, I got you. Okay. But uh, no, I do have a little bit of data. So um, okay. you can do it that way, or you can do um, the non-summary, so it okay. will break down everything and save those PDFs and email them over. So don't brown. Don't, okay. Yeah, they're, they're that did take every minute. Oh, 100 days pages. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Might take a second. Jackie, will you take it out? That means that, like, even if we meet on the second it or third matter. of the month, like, I could get all the details. Yeah. That Anytime I you want it, you can go in and just do it whenever you it's need there. it. It's there. It's there for you immediately. So, end of month, you don't have to be there. You don't have to do anything except mm -hmm. print reports. Yeah, right now my whole life is around in the month. You can do orders in here. Um, you can do all the standard stuff you do. So how does ordering work? Um, you can generate one from sales history or you got one. I, like I, I like to build my own. Cause then I'm, you just come yeah, right here and you That's type in what you want and build your I'm order working. and hit send. Jim being fan. <laughs> what do you do when That's right. the inventory comes in? Do you have a scanner? To we add have an inventory it? scanner. It runs an Android application that we developed. Um, and the way that would work is there's a counts table in here. So you're taking the scanner, you're going down, mm -hmm. you're just counting. It's mm -hmm. pretty quick. It's five in a you know, scan, six in. Yeah, I, I use the one I'm now. Right. Yeah. Uh, and when you're done counting, right at the register end, mm -hmm. you could, if you were at the register and wanted to do everything there, you could come here, hit get count, it'll pull your count data in, and you can print it, and it'll print just your variances. So That's great. You, or, if you wanted to, you could do it from the back office end, mm -hmm. under, I think i got to use this one now, um, under this, hit get count, and it'll show you all that data. And you can tell whether it's a partial count or full count. So if it's a partial count, it won't matter what you didn't count. But if it's a full count, it'll highlight in yellow all the things you didn't count. So that okay. way you can quickly visually see that on the screen. And shelf labels too. What kind of uh, they look like? Do you have any shelf labels? Shelf labels are pretty simple. Um, basically, you would hit price changes, what's going up, what's going down, mm -hmm. and print them on different color labels. So I can pick the ones on C. That's great. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to like just move over a couple of items, uh -huh. yeah. you could move them over oh, and those would print. And so when you would hit uh, build labels, it builds a file. We import that file into the my labels program you're probably right, using. I, yeah. uh, import that in and there they are. So with mine, I have to go through and manually delete them. But if I screw up, then I have to restart all over again right. because, but this is nice because you have a master file over here. And that's, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if you moved over one, like you just said, one of them was a bad mistake, so mm -hmm. you can click on that one. I could just double click it and it goes back over. I would love my job. <laughs> <laughs> it would simplify things for sure. Yeah, if you wanted to, like I said, if you had price changes, you could just hit price changes and it would pull all the price changes over, just those. Uh, most people, what they're doing now, and I tell you this, regardless of what decisions you make, if you do print shelf labels, go to onlinelabels.com to buy them. You can get, I think, uh, 75,000 labels for like 50 bucks. Wow. It's insane. Wow. It's really, really cheap. <coughs> um, but I tell everybody to do that. Can you but, go to item maintenance? Like, yeah. And there's item maintenance. So if you click on one, does it show you like all the UPC codes associated with that? No. Uh, we don't worry about the UPC codes as much. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because they are they're a pain to deal with. So what we do in here is let's say you added a new item. Um, so in order to get it into the system, you have to add that right. item mm -hmm. into your back office side, which right. is where your ordering happens over here mm -hmm. from this screen. Mm -hmm. 
So we add that new item. At the register, that well, first off, that, that item's already in the register automatically. There's nothing you have to do. You, you just, don't have to scan and add item. Well, we do that part, but what we okay. do is we add item, scan the UPC, <laughs> and then enter, and then put in the five digit code. Change it up on. And then as you scan that UPC, it'll bring up that. And it would keep that UPC tied directly just right. to that number. So we made that table, you, we made a table. <laughs> like a lot of times people will have uh, in other other systems, they'll have the, those UPCs will be in there like multiple times mm -hmm. and it causes all kinds of headaches. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I set the UPC flag to be unique in my table. So only one UPC can be linked to any five-digit code. Oh. So you could have uh, multiple UPCs linked to one five-digit code, but you can only have one UPC in it because only one UPC is going to ever exist. Right, that is so. yeah, great. And that's how it works. So. How about updating orders? When you say update orders? Um, when a truck comes in. Okay, so when a truck comes in, um, and I'll do it real quick. So you'll hit receive order, which I'm gonna hit receive all. Okay. The difference between receive order and receive all is receive order pulls from LBNB, brings your invoices in. Mm -hmm. Receive all just says whatever you got order on the order side, bring it over to the uh, receive side. So, but we'll just pretend like that's okay. our big order. There it is. It's right there. We can modify. Let's say we didn't receive four, we actually received three. We could change it there. Uh, that's it. We save. We can run an edit list report if we wanted to. Um, and update order, and we're done. What is that say? That's it. Uh, if you have QuickBooks, we can automatically send <laughs> your information. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> QuickBooks online or QuickBooks desktop? It should be. It's, we use desktop. It's Transaction Pro that we use. And I don't know if it works for online. Uh, we've never had anybody say that. But it will send your uh, all of your uh, invoices over. Yeah. To there, so you don't have to queue in. So I have a quick question about the receive order. You said that pulls from the invoices so if your order is short that's already accounted for if they know it's short at an LBA, they know it's short if they it'll, load already, the truck. it'll already be there oh uh, you don't have to do anything to it oh. <laughs> it's, it's really it's really simple so. sorry i have a question okay i had a phone call yesterday oh which one um our current Oh, okay. All right. And they hinted that your software is based off of their backbone. No. Okay. So who, who is your competitor, current one? Definitely. No. <laughs> Not even close. Okay. Not even Can close. Can you explain? Maybe he was thinking of a different one. There's no, only a few of you, so, yeah, so I'm just curious. He uses a web-based system. Uh, that does not use an SQL Express database. We use an SQL Express database. So everything that's done, I can see it right here in this table. These are gotcha. all of your tables. Yes. He doesn't have that. Okay. So no, not not even close. Um. So. Okay, this is going to sound like a weird question, but this is something I've dealt with the current system. Mm-hmm. When you say you know the software at our store or whatever mm -hmm. it's going to pertain everything in there is going to pertain to our store yes right okay. just your right store. now some of our reports are i've heard okay yeah but i, well, I don't agree well, i yeah. got something from that's a pittsburgh am i <laughs> yes you do uh and i know why <laughs> okay um, I, I did work at carolina data for like yeah. 18 years so but I mean, yeah you've i know helped me a few times I, yes that. um yeah, currently some of our reports have to do with other stores right and it's i don't i don't want to know anything about the other stores. Our store is the store. I saw that about. when I upgraded Madison. Um, yeah, because you just upgraded her. We just upgraded her. Um, she just left, she's the one that just left from Dalcom yeah. and had the same issues as I had. Yeah. And he was telling her the same stuff that he was trying to tell me. It was. So how many customers do you have in North Carolina? I have uh, right at 40 ABC boards. 
Are you in huh? anywhere else besides North Carolina? No, nope, that's all I do. Okay. North Carolina ABC. And how long have you been selling your product? This is going on three years. Two, three years. Yeah. And did you develop it? Like, are you writing all this code in the background? Uh, me? Yeah, I developed all of this. I actually just hired another developer to help out uh, out of Gastonia, actually. But, uh, yeah, we do it all. All this, I told you I emailed all the ABC stores in North Carolina, the ones that did reply to me and everything, and I highlighted all the ones that are currently using SGC, and every single one of them are very happy. So, so you're getting good feedback from there, so. Try hard, try hard, and, and that's the other thing, since we do write everything in-house, you need something changed, you change it. I mean, we try to customize everything for what you guys want. But. So, what's your succession plan? Like, what happens if something happens to you? Uh, <laughs> 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 there you go, there. Wow, I mean, like, like, okay. You have to act. It's, I it's been work with before. small yeah. companies, small software mm -hmm. companies, and if you don't have the person that's the mastermind behind it, what happens after? That's why we have another programmer. Um, and as a matter of fact, there's a. Uh, how am I supposed to put it? So if anything happens, the other programmer does his thing. He takes over maintaining the software. My techs, they still do their thing because they're going to be the ones that really. You talk to, and that's pretty much how it would roll down. Do you think that the other developer can do everything that you? Oh, and more. Yeah, that's why I hired him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to go fishing. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's yeah. He's a he's a really sharp guy. So, uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the plan. But that's been asked before, and my we have the, actually this succession plan uh, legally uh, filed. Good. Sorry. Good. So, what about it? You know, we we're right now currently a one store, but if mm -hmm. we ever went to a two store, easy enough. Uh, uh, this is designed for multi stores as well as single stores. I just took a my first customer was Northampton County, which is four stores didn't have internet in any of the stores. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was rough. <laughs> I had to figure out how to take. An SQL database, because I'm working with new technology. I had to figure out how to take an SQL database, save this this file, and then transfer it over a modem. Mm. A modem <laughs> connection. A modem? <laughs> yeah. And then expand it back out, restore the database to be able just to run her month in reports. Those first two months, I was like, you gotta get internet. Like you got you just gotta get it. And she finally did. But that being said, I ran. I, when I and that was me in the middle of creating the software. We did it as everything is a single store, and so if you add a multi-store, it works exactly the same way. The only difference is, and I'll show you. Wilson County server. Mm -hmm. And like uh, their sales view. Let's run this for yesterday and day. Everything combines together. So all we have to do is tell them the warehouse table, hey, you've got this other store. Boom. And it knows, oh, well, we'll just start showing that in the list as well. When you go to run a report, um, like your spiritual liquor report, we just run for these dates because it doesn't matter. It combines all that data. It knows to go out and get all the data from each store and properly display your info. So it adds everything up. That 105, 140 should technically be the pre-tax retail and the uh, mixed beverage sales together. So you can't individually select those stores. reports and mm -hmm. yeah, it make well. me so happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> any of that. Uh, we do, let's see, 
And so you keep you run the SQL database on your servers, correct? It runs locally in your store. So we need a server? Uh, no, your register one will be the server. Okay. Yeah. Now, oh, you have uh, the existing equipment. Mm -hmm. So we probably just pop a server for you. Oh, it's a small thing for us. So. We have a, a, a given a maximum of two registers. Up, so. Right. Okay. And real internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, there's a deposit history report. So if you wanted to get that for the entire month, uh -oh. you, could, you, say that? you could get that and it would break out everything. So if you do FinTech, it's there. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's broken down by stores because it's like store four. That's five. right. And then you have grand totals at the end, I believe. But if I did it correctly, you have grand totals at the end. No, I didn't do it right on that one. But that's okay. You have totals for each store. So, so if something just messes up in the middle of the day and I need tech support, do I call and can you dial in remotely and fix we everything? We fix 99% of our problems a lot of because they uh -huh. are just, it's like that. It's you, and usually the problems that we do have are, I forgot how to do this. Because you don't, there's a lot of you just don't do anymore, and it's like I, I just forgot how to do this. Overthinking it when you're so you overthinking is a big thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's I mean that's pretty much it. It's it's simple. It's, it's there for you. You get what you need when you need it. Any other questions from me? I've had some, but they're already answered. <laughs> um, when you hire a new employee, you do this from the back. You would come to the admin and clerk, and then you would create the new employee. Oh. So can I see the time clock? Yeah. Yeah. So we can do that ourselves. That's uh huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Currently, I have to call and have them do that. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I have to call. I've had to call for the last week. Wow. Basically, what I have is a very, like, we just have a schedule, and you're just, you're there. there. You're there. You're supposed mm -hmm. to show up. So is there, like, is this where you clock in or clock out? Mm -hmm. oh. So at the register, um, no padding time. There's, like you get a uh, time clock. Okay. And if I had it enabled, your clerk would be listed there. You would click it. Okay. A button pops up in the middle, says clock in, and it would move you over to that side to where you're clocked in. Oh, I love when you go to clock out, you click it, and the button pops up, says clock out, you clock out. And then that generates this report. Do you know how to give me payroll There's one on the downtime, but it's so ridiculous. So what about the... Like when you, an employee comes in, whoever's opening the store normally comes in about half an hour before the store is opened and before the registers are really up for sale. Does that Would you be able to account for that? Can you still clock in? Yeah, still clock in as soon as you walk in with or without? Okay. Because yeah. you know, the, whoever opens and whoever closes is you know, normally there about half an hour before. Half an hour we're actually before. looking at creating a um, it's, there's there are Raspberry Pi devices, and we're actually looking at creating one with a touch screen on it oh, that I just like links that. to this. We just and we mount it to the wall. It's linked up wirelessly. Runs UW, a UWP app that just lets you clock in and out. That's great. So. Um, you should have gone board <laughs> Well, you, you can give them referrals. I can. They're, and they are, um, I only have three board members. Um, and, and we know, usually if there's anything that needs to be changed, um, I, I can usually say, hey, this really needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And then um, we can kind of work with that. That right. sounds like they're on the back room, so I'd have to kind of make them feel They're so pretty good. So they have an idea. Yeah. I'm recording this, so if you need the, a copy of the recording, put in the listen as oh, well. Yeah, they may not be able yeah. to see the screen, though. Know. Yeah. 
Can I mm. see the screen, Bill? Bill. Did you lose Bill? Yeah, I you were calling my name. What was the question? I didn't hear it. Can, if on the recording, they can't see the screen, can they? Uh, no, unfortunately, what he presented won't be accessible, but he can certainly, you know, give us his slides um, to the extent that he had, you know. But as far as, like, him working through the software and stuff, no, we're not going to have that on the report. Okay. okay. But ultimately, it's you and the clerk running it, so we're going to I would, in order for us to make a decision, I feel like we need, like, a firm quote on what you think we need. Mm -hmm. We have cash registers now that we just purchased. Mm -hmm. so I did that. Um, I got it in email format, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess my question would be like, you just said we needed a server. Is that going to add an extra no, cost? No, no, no. My quote is my quote. Okay. Yeah, we usually what we do is we come in if we need if we find that there's something we missed, we need that. Okay. So we try not to miss anything. <laughs> okay. But uh, but yeah, no, nah, that's that's all. Fine. Oh yeah. So what this is, that's your NCDR yeah. report. Um, and you would just run it for the entire year of last year. Oh, I can do that myself. You can do that. You generate and then we'll go through generate that file, export it and email it off to them. That's great. So yeah, we include that in there as well. For all of the different reporting and things, do you have uh, job age, is there training, how do they know how to operate all this stuff other than, I know the cash register part's very simple. For, we have a manual that we're actually currently developing right now. Everything's kind of changed so fast over, over the technology changes and we, we adapt very quickly to that and we try to. Um, but a lot of that stuff is done through that, just through our online manual or manual. Here. I can take this today and run it. it you, I mean, no, I'm saying. You, yeah. Because you figure it out. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's there. So mm -hmm. and so, as you make changes to that manual and update it, do you like email the managers and let them know these are updates? Usually, updates happen uh, through this change log. You'll see like uh, different things that we do um, uh, through here. If we do bug fixes and things like that, and that'll point you basically to the manual. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So and we just let you we let you roll on roll on with it. Um This portion is just like view only, right? You can't can you mess stuff up in here? Yeah. You can. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You, so Jackie can't have that. <laughs> I'm assuming you're tracing those changes so that we can like recreate <laughs> so he makes the wrong mistakes. That's right. I love okay. that right there. Where it, if I, I can go in and if they change vendor mm -hmm. and stuff, everything will pass. change it right there. Yep. Uh, it shows you the amount that they've done for the current year. So you can always kind of go in there if you're looking at a vendor, you can see how much you spent well, throughout the current year. Can, oh. um, one other, can I do, um, a manual unsellable merchandise report, like your something broke down. Uh, claims report. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that's, that's Everybody calls it something different. Though. Yeah, they do. It's hilarious. Um, so that's under adjustments. Basically, a breakage report. <laughs> yeah. And we'll call this. We create. You create a bag, which that's not safe, but okay. <laughs> it's close enough. Um, you create a bag. Hey, Smear off minis. That's right. <laughs> Um, and then we just yeah. pick which claim type it is. Mm -hmm. So we'll just say it's a broken bottle. And there it is. And then we run our claims report. Oh, I don't have a vendor set for that one. I forgot. My bad. Let me fix that. That's okay. I was just saying how easy it was. It was super easy. And I just edited that item. Come mm -hmm. back here. And the claims report. And there it is. And then, of course, all of your signature lines are down at the bottom of it. And at any time, it's easily accessible for the clerks to inquire a price or inquire our inventory right there on the spot. Where if they wanted to count something right then and there, they could. On the inquiry screen? Yep, that's, that's mm -hmm. the real thing. Thousand bottles per case, 
how many they sold in 30 days. Oh, that's, that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah. and, oh. um, and then at the bottom data grid, it will show you the uh, like the last time you received it in. Um, I think does it show on order? No, I said typically on order. Uh, but it shows you the last time you sold it, the date and time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank no you. problem. No problem. Um, no more questions? Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, um, thank y'all very much. And you've got my number? Yeah. Yes. I have your number. Yes. <laughs> uh, right now. It's two five, I don't have any cards on me. Okay. Uh, 252 259. Three five zero three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You I did. I got plenty of time. Thank you so much. Yep. It was nice to meet y'all. Yeah. Well, thank you. And see some of y'all again. <laughs> Agenda of citizens' comments. Does anyone here have any comments? Okay, next item is financial report. Jackie. Hey. Alright. I sent you guys the financial analysis. I missed a few. Conversation with Dalcom this week. February is correct. It does match what I have in my books. It matches the cash that has come in. So I feel confident that February is right. I am, I am hoping that December is right because we've amended those. January, we have not amended yet and needs to be amended. Um, but the other thing that I did, and I and I um, went through this with Lori Lee, so I just kind of wanted to know that Phil sent you a spreadsheet of the distribution required. So this is the spreadsheet that um, you can pull off the ABC, like where you log in. Um, and so this is current as of 131, and I confirmed all of my calculations with Lori Lee this week. Um, these are from my tax reports, from one of those reports that you guys just saw. Um, and so if I take, um, here is the mandatory distribution that should be due to the town as of January 31st for the year to date, okay? Um, and then you've also got on top of that, so this is our net profit before distributions. Um, and then you've got on top of that mandatory distribution, you get your law enforcement and your alcohol education. Okay, and then um, I took, because January was the seventh month, I took seven twelfths of the town clerk and the public works totals that Phil had included in his, and um, got to a total due as of January 31st for the year of 31722 65 Of that amount, um, 
I had that 23, 333.31 had been paid. So that means that technically you're underpaid by 83.89 as of the end of June. Phil's calculation, Phil pulled his um, information I get off of the ABC Commission website. Um, and I think that it does more of like a general calculation. Go ahead, you're about to ask a question. No, okay. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to like run through this with you guys and show you what that mandatory distribution looked like um, as of today for the year. And I didn't, I mean, I didn't show Lori Lee this part from here down, but I sent her this whole spreadsheet and asked her to confirm that I was correct, and she did confirm that my calculations were correct and I was looking at everything. Um, so, does anybody have any questions on that? Are we paying additional though with that this year because of what our agreement was? Because of the prior year, yes. We don't have cash. We don't have cash right now. Yeah. So, no. Oh, so it's only when we have cash. Well, it should be like it's supposed to be paid. Yeah. But if I pay the town, like so right now, after I wrote checks for today, there's about thirty thousand left in the bank as of like two days ago. And I expect the taxes to be about forty thousand dollars, and so I'm short money right now. So, and I didn't pay the town any profit distribution this month. And I still am supposed to pay them thirty thousand dollars by the end of this fiscal year to make up for last year. All right. So we've got basically two things in play. We've got an income statement expense that should reflect that. Yes. Sir. So when you when you give us our January 31 income statement, we have expensed out profits paid to the town of twenty three thousand. Yes, that, sir, that's this number that's right that here. That's that twenty three thousand. Yes, okay. Sir. And then the other uh, thing that we have to take into account is balance sheet debt that we owe to the town, and that gets paid through our net profit. Correct. So that forty-two thousand that you're showing down there at the bottom, that's the money that we use to pay that debt down. Jack, the only question that I have related to that is that debt figure seems to change every month. Um, which debt figure? On the balance sheet. So this debt figure due 31? to the town, yeah, will change as I pay it down. But it's in. The starting at, number. Yeah, at the at the end of June of last year it was 29. August it was 32. October it was 39, and it's been 31 447 for December and January. Um, hang on. It may be that um sometimes, and I need to look at this and I'll pull it up for you. Sure. Um, I'm just going to ask you maybe next month. There's. Is there a way in QuickBooks to just uh, reconcile that GL uh, number for due to the town that's on the balance sheet? So sometimes that should explain it. Um, But I'm trying to think if there's anything that the ABC store may have owed the town for over and above um, the loan balance. So I and I don't. asking that same question every month, but that, that's why I'm asking because it just changes. No, oh, I'll be happy to show you, and if I've done something wrong, I, I will most definitely fix it, but I have so many numbers going through my head. What is that? So is that you? I just can't remember. 
we are obligated to a certain percent of profits, is that right? Yes, you are obligated to whatever that three and a half percent mandatory distribution that is not necessarily profit. It's oh, okay. based on your sales after certain taxes. Okay. You could have made an adjustment. I That's made correct. the June adjustment. Sure. Does that, that probably, make sense? That because I don't was. have the total numbers at yeah. the end. And I so mean, the financial statements are ever changing. I assume that. And I did a little back yes. of the em envelope cash flow this morning over a cup of coffee. And I'm coming up about $18,000 short. So that would, my guess is, is that. 18,000 that I come up short was the adjustment that you made, but I don't know. All right, so this is from April 1st forward. So I had a $48,000 difference in April, and that would have been the previous fiscal year's mm -hmm. profit. Mm -hmm. And so I paid in April, May, and June, I paid about $16,000 each month. Right. And then my 630 um, adjustments were one was 31448 and this is the uh, CPA adjustment and then I had made a previous adjustment of 29437 yeah that so that total gets to 6884 but like this adjustment so uh, I didn't do that adjustment until November 26th so that's why when you're looking at, at the balance sheet every month, it's not in there up until the November balance sheet. Like, okay. does that is that helpful? That well, that makes sense. That okay. explains why I was was questioning. So, <clears throat> just so everyone's clear on it, the amount that we still owe the town from last year's distribution through the end of January is this $31,000. And here we are in March, April, May, and June. We got to come up with that money before year end. Yeah, and I was actually going to pay, like I did the calculation today, and it was like 7000 a month. And I was going to pay 7000 and then I remembered that I didn't have the tax payments yet, and so I stopped. I couldn't pay that. So. And Jackie, on top of that, uh, we've got a minimum annual payment on the Land too, right? I don't think so because the first year I think is a construction loan, but I have made two quarterly payments, sure. okay. and so that's part that's part of your cash shortage is that I've been paying on that, and I can tell you how much. I'll show you the check. This is um only going to be the principal payment. I think I made seven thousand dollars. Yeah, I paid seventy five hundred twice so far on the loans. That's another fifteen thousand that's in there. Well, keep in the back of your mind if we get down closer to the end of the year and you know we're gonna come up short and if we didn't have a requirement to make that principal reduction, I may make a motion to the board to take an advance on the loan to replenish at fifteen and make our Work. Well, and I think the loan, 
And I, I actually took it out without budget amendment because I figured that y'all would go a different way, but we, it's not approved yet, so it can be adjusted. Um, I think the loan is technically a construction loan. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we've done enough improvements to like pull out. I'm not sure we'd have to talk to the bank about what their requirements are to pull out on that yeah, loan. But there are, uh, there was the availability, I think, for a year to pull out sure. additional funds. Right. I think if we can just get that town debt paid back next fiscal year, we should be able to have some uh, additional work and capital available where it's not so tight all the time. So we're going to know this again next fiscal year for the year we're currently in. Is that right? No, we're, we're paying that as we go. No, we're not going to distribute any anything over the contract amount of forty thousand dollars for the year we're currently in. Mm -hmm. okay. So it may a unless the sales so require us to. Yeah. To so like. Is this mandatory? So th this is why I wanted y'all to see this because the mandatory distribution right now is about twenty six mm -hmm. six, right? Then on top of that, you got your law enforcement and your alcohol education, which are a percentage of your profits. That may change, okay? Percentage um, of profits. profits. Percentage of profits, yes. Um, and then you've also got your town clerk and your public works payments for like mowing the grass. And then Emily's time. So, and those totals are three. Emily is three thousand, and Publix Works was twenty six hundred. Are we paying those every month? They are included. Like that is going to be in that like the standard monthly payment, and then we're going to have to reconcile that at the yeah. end of the year. Yeah, but you you've been paying three thousand a month. Yes. Okay. That's the twenty three that we've already paid. Mm -hmm. But I wanted y'all to see that right now we're already short. Eighty four hundred dollars yeah. in the payments today. Yeah. So there's going to be probably on top of the forty. There's probably going to be an additional payment due. I just don't like us being in a position that where we have to shuffle money around. Mm -hmm. So if we can just get through this year, I think we'll be in better shape next year. Do we have to do anything to change that, or did that already happen? That we don't get put in the same. Where we are it's, it's in that down. contract that Sam and Phil negotiated. Will there so be a new contract then coming, or we already did that? I don't think there's an expiration date on that contract, but Phil, Phil sent out a copy of it okay. to us. Uh, Jack, you want to ask Phil? I'll yeah, here I, I, I planned on presenting a, bit, a revision at your next meeting, and then also just to confirm the clerk amount. That's three thousand for the for the year, and then the public works is a I think it's twenty six hundred for the year. Yeah, I no, um, I had done it by the number of months we were into the. Yeah, I thought that was false. Yeah, but I, I just uh, I, I, for some reason I thought I might have heard uh, three thousand a month. I just wanted to make make sure that there was some clarity. Yeah, Phil, that's what Jackie's paying to the town right now. It's three thousand a month. Right, got it. But that's for everything, the three and a half percent plus right. the contract. Right. So Jackie, would would you be uh, amenable to us tabling this budget amendment? Yeah. This month? Okay. I mean, like, um, and I'll talk about the budget amendment because a majority of that is is salaries, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's an estimate based on like the last um, payroll times the number of payrolls that I have to go. Um, I will say that our payroll costs have gone up. I'm, I'm gonna do I'm you. Um, I know that we're busier. I know we're doing more sales, but we just need to make sure that we're being smart with our scheduling mm -hmm. and not over scheduling people because we got to pay them. Mm -hmm. And the hours, our discussion on hours, make sure you're watching that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All right. um, so that is a majority <coughs> of the budget amendment. I'm fine if we table it. I need to also get you a budget for next year, but I was kind of waiting to see what you guys came up with today on moving forward before I started <laughs> trying to build that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that is 
I do. Do we need to talk about the cash register? We're going to talk about the cash register. It's in all the pieces. Okay. All right. I think that's all I have for financial. Does anybody have any questions? Um, probably for her, but how do we determine, how does, do you know how she determines our labor or hours or, okay, we need, we need to get some direction on it's got to be a percentage of sales or we got to try to control that at least. Jackie, you sent out a report that compared this year's uh, income statement to last year's, mm -hmm. and I thought that I had printed it out, but I don't know if I can play that. go back to it again. Clean the balance sheet. If all all the cash works balance it thinks it's reconciled. So the cash it, the sales should be right. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I just had to work through that in my head because I'm worried about the cash register. But yeah, so you're up a hundred thousand dollars. Right. I will say that like because of how she's, if her inventory is not coming out of that POS software right, then my inventory number valuation may be off. So, which affects everything. I was just curious why, if sales are up $100,000, that our gross profit's only up 6000 Because our margin in liquor is much, much better than that. Um, again, I'll go back to the inventory okay. valuation on part of it. I don't know for sure. Um, you're up employee benefits, you're up about 10000 Um, you started paying me this year. That we didn't have a contract for you last year, so that's Correct. a natural increase. Yeah. Um, uh, dues and subscriptions, I think that's the, that just may be a timing, you know, that's got to be related to the new cash register software. Yeah. Um. <coughs> oh wait, this is July through January, so this is not necessarily year end. Mm -hmm. So that this may come up at year end based on whenever we paid the annual fee for the other cash register. No, that's last year. Yeah, I know. So, but you're only looking from July 2018 to January oh, 2019. Oh, yeah, I follow you. I follow you. Um. We've got debt loan payments, so this is your interest on the loan, estimated interest on the loan. Um, and then you've got your cash registers, mm -hmm. so that was a big expense. Utilities are up as well. And then this is the um, appraisal. That's the outro. Yeah. Carolina site review and then the, the appraisal is in there. So you got a significant number of expenses that are new this year that were not there last year. Mm -hmm. We really need to look at that gross profit number because it should be much higher than 6000 compared to last year the sales won't have that much. That you mean the total net? No, but at the top. At the top. Yeah. yeah. See, our sales went up 100, but our gross profit only went up 6,000. And again, I think that if you're reporting the wrong, yeah. if, if a lawyer is reporting the wrong amounts on those reports, then we're paying the wrong no, tax statements. No, 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 no. She's okay. not doing it purposely, sure. but those reports coming out, like, yeah. I. Probably, I can quickly go back through and pull the reports from the start and compare them to what I have in QuickBooks and tell you how far off I think we are. I didn't notice a difference in sales tax until December, so 
So I, I'm hoping that October and November are correct. But um, I know that we have paid too much tax in, in at least December and January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which who knows how long. I mean, like once you pay it to the state, getting it back is. Yeah, but <laughs> you're not. You probably are not. You, you probably would have been back with the next payment shorted by that amount. <laughs> I, I do remember too that there was some discussion a month or so back that you were shorted some. And we did toys. finally get those credits there in this check run, mm -hmm. and that was yeah. in December, and we didn't get the credits until February. So. That expense shows up in on that yeah. cost of goods. Yeah, yeah. It, won't, so it won't. It won't. That may explain <coughs> some of yeah. the reason why and, and that it was, looks so bad. That was a huge number. Okay. Well, I'm glad y'all guys got on top of that. Now. <laughs> so when you talked to Wesley maybe. this weekend, he talked about the sales. Was it double posting or not? The, Let's wait till we get to, let's get to the cash register part. Okay, we're that part. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Jackie, if we run all these adjustments through, when would we be able to see that number there improve? Should we be looking at this particular report every month to compare this year to last? I thought we were. Okay. I thought I was including it in there and then Yeah, I just don't know that we've been pulling it up and actually going through it during the meeting. But anyway, that's that's good. I appreciate it. Anyone have any other questions for Jack? So I guess uh, the rule or the takeaway for the day is let's watch personnel expenses a little bit between now and the end of the year and try to work out a plan for how we get the town paid back. All right. Okay. Do you have anything else, Jack? Uh, not until we get to the cash register. Next item is consent agenda, which included the minutes from the last ABC board meeting. So what we'll need to do is amend the agenda to remove the budget amendments if we want to hold off until next month. Okay. So I just need a motion to amend the consent agenda to remove the budget amendment. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Is there any uh, motion on uh, approving the consent agenda after that then? Anybody have any? Okay. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Old business. Uh, continued discussion on the proposed remodel of the ABC store. I think time's of the essence. Uh, if, if you guys don't mind, I'll just give you a quick update and then I'll ask Todd and Phil to uh, pick up any pieces that I might have missed. But we met with, uh, we sent out requests for proposals to about five different developers. Uh, we met with two. Uh, the other three uh, looked at the proposal, thanked us for inviting them for discussion, but they didn't have to express an interest to do any further uh, uh, negotiations with us. So based on the two that we met with, uh, we all learned that in the recent zoning change that the town had, our property had, was affected by that zoning change. So basically, uh, to sum it all up for everybody, if we build on that site, the building needs to be up at the road and the parking needs to be behind it. So what we've learned in talking to one of the developers is that if they purchase the property and build a building on the building, we will have to tear our building down. So we would not be able to operate there during construction. So that puts a whole new wrinkle on our discussions and I kind of like to maybe just leave it at that for now um, and then at the uh, next month uh, when Sam's back we have some more discussion on what the board wants us as a committee to do going forward. We're still waiting on a figure from the one of the developers for a purchase price. They may make an offer to buy the property and if they do we'll naturally uh, bring it back to you all. But it looks like we're going to have to just sell the property and move out and wow. come back and come back later once the building is complete. Why does the building have to be at the road? That's what the town requires in the building for a downtown building. So just kind of if you picture Sharon's and that strip similar to that of where you're going to have your storefront on the road. 
So the storefront's on the front of, but the parking will be behind it, so the customer has to walk around the building. That uh, way your entrance would be on the back side as well. Oh, okay. So, so the back of the you building is going to okay. face the street. That doesn't make any sense. So it's to give it a downtown mm -hmm. type feel, which, and, and I, I know it's hard to imagine the pictures and that we got, it would, it would probably look really good. So oh, okay. we, we don't want to share them yet. And I, we yeah. had the same reaction. Yeah, and then, yeah that's no. What was that uh, ABC tour that we looked at during one of the meetings? I can pull that up on the screen if you want to take a look at it. It was Mayor the, Margaret, a better idea. Yeah, because I It's the uh, Belmont ABC store. Belmont ABC store. I'll pull that up. Give me a second. Yeah, the back of the store is straight. It sounds awful. Well, let me. I know we're going to table it, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. But let me ask you this. We've got the DOT changes coming with the roundabout uh, that has that screen? Okay. Uh, it's very distant. No, go ahead, Phil. It's a great comment. I could tell you that we've, I've actually set a meeting on uh, March 16th to have a conversation with Joey Hopkins, who's our division engineer with DOT, to try to begin to initiate some conversations surrounding the potential participation of whomever is going to develop this property to make that a reality and then to obviously at the same time incorporate uh you know that that traffic circle into the design if that's possible because i think that that's kind of where the town needs to go long term that's what i was thinking because if you're going if, if that's going to be happening and there's any like at the corner would would the dot be taking into the a portion of the property there? Um, I, they probably would take it just a little bit. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be significant in, in the grand scheme of things, but we probably would need to use a little bit of that corner if, if, if we're putting a traffic circle yeah. on there. Right, and if, if we go that route, then that's also going to, I mean, even for the developer, whoever, that's because they have to build so many feet back, so they're going to have to add additional whatever that amount taken. Right. One of one of the benefits of the zoning change that that kind of and I don't know if you can see on the screen there, it's kind of just a picture of what the building might look like from the street. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like that, but you just know that the parking behind it, so you don't see parking when you drive by. You see the storefront, and then of course you know you'd be able to walk into the building from the other side. Uh, but as a part of that design change in the in the town development ordinance the setbacks were changed so basically you can build 14 and a half feet i believe it is from the curb so as whereas normally you'd have to maybe have a, a, a an additional setback maybe 20 feet or 25 feet you can actually build that building closer to the curb so that's kind of our way to accommodate that does that make sense yeah and we have the zoning so basically uh, you know, the grassy area uh, it, it, it's not mandated, but we might want to have that, and then you have the curb, you know, with the sidewalk, and then the building is just right there. And the developers that are interested are all very aware of all the things mentioned, so they that was part of their Thank you, Todd. Yeah, that was part of everything they're considering. So they're we had a zoning uh, person from the town in here and gave them all the specifics of what they could do, so that they're very aware of what what they would be taking on. When the um, burnt barrel was wanted here 101, when they first went in, they actually were told about the roundabout, and that's why their parking lot is shaped the way it is because they are aware and designed their parking lot around the area that they may lose as well. So it looked like at the time it would be closer towards, um, you'd lose more property towards that five points instead of over towards the ABC store, but you would lose some of ABC. Um, but Previous developers have used that information and designed around it as well. And the speedway has also been, just, you know, included in that conversation. Yes. They're amenable to that that entire improvement as well. Is there a timeline line for the roundabout? Do we even know? We haven't talked about that. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it'll happen in the next uh year or two um i hope to gain more information when we meet with dot on the 16th of this month so I, i'm happy to provide an update at your next meeting okay. thank you yeah 
naturally my, my biggest concern right now is the longer that we delay in making a decision, the more chance that there might be that someone would come in and lease that space we went looked at up at the food line. So I really want to encourage the board to think hard about that. And our minutes from the last meeting, it seemed like the consensus was that we all had an interest in moving into that building. So whether we uh, sell the property now or, or wait later, uh, I, I really hope that we can have a good discussion next month about making a decision to move into that store to food line. So let's let's think about it between now and the next meeting. I want to also caution you about the uh, uh, three of us meeting together, uh, having discussions. So if you want to have some conversations between board members, it might be best that uh, it's done via the email system that we have. And you, I don't know, Phil, you can advise us best on that, right? I can. Can you repeat the question, please? I think you, uh, you were a little uh, low in volume for me. Okay, sorry. You, you want to advise everybody, if we're going to try to be coming up with a decision by next meeting on what we want to do about expanding to a second location as far as communicating between one another between now and next meeting, would you want to advise us on how that communication needs to be handled? Sure. Um, you know, uh, it's just so long as three people aren't communicating about ABC board business at the same time, then then you're fine. At, once you have three people, then you have a quorum. So you, you can't have three or more get together to talk about any ABC board business without calling a special meeting. So if you want to take uh, point Rick or someone else, I think it would be appropriate based on you know your role in the process so far. I think so long as you reach out independently and collect feedback, uh, that that would be fine. As long as you know it's just you and someone else, um, I, I don't think it would be appropriate to have an email chain where everybody is going back and forth because that could be. I mean, legally it's an electronic meeting, so if you, you have three people on an email chain and you're all kind of communicating with each other in, in a short amount of time, the state would consider that to be a, a, an electronic meeting. So I don't think that would be appropriate. Um, so I think maybe if you want to correspond with individual members, that that would be fine and consolidate feedback. Is that helpful? Yes, yeah, very helpful. Thank you. Yep. I don't think we have an action item today related to that discussion. Does anybody else have anything to say or should we move on to the next one? Okay. Um, old business number two, discussion of the cash register system. Um, real quick, um, I made a comment that um, you know, ultimately it's myself and my clerk have to deal with the system um, regarding payroll and stuff like that. If I, just saying, if I had something like that, it would be a whole, I would get to be back on the floor more like I wanted to be and was. What we have the current system we have right now, I feel like I'm just in the office all the time. Um, yeah, I could cut back on people in the, you know, during the week when me and Nikki there, because she, we have two of us up front instead of one of us up in the office all the time. <laughs> anyway, comment on that. But. So I would, I copied Todd. Sorry, I no. You're good. I appreciate it. <laughs> I stated I was checking everything. I I copied this stuff. On all of my communications with Dalton. So, uh, which included January sales issues as well as February sales issues. Um, January they were pretty slow to respond, um, and then ended up telling me that there were certain reports that didn't even print correctly and that we shouldn't be looking at those reports and then I asked well what reports should we be looking at and she's very again slow to respond finally did respond one report I get an error on the other report I pulled and it was incorrect so when I did February I was comparing what came out of the monthly and then what was in QuickBooks we were off by about $16,000 um, I sent an email, I was, I was kind of hot, 
<laughs> um, I sent an email and was like, is Dalcom going to pay for our extra taxes because your reports are all wrong? And um, I actually got a response back from Wesley that night and we communicated back and forth several times. Um, Wesley is the COO of Dalcom. He has been here a few times. Um, I had about a 45 minute conversation with him yesterday. Um, he told me in January that there was some kind of system update on the computers, cash registers, and that it didn't go through. It was not finalized. And because of that update, I guess when the cash register software is trying to communicate with the home whatever system to enter the sales, it's getting hung up and therefore is trying to push it through more than one time, which is why the sales are getting duplicated. And that's what the problem is with web -based. So, I asked him, why did I have issues in December, if in January you're telling me this is when it occurred, because in December I had multiple issues too. Um, he was not, I mean, he did tell me that they do have some issues with the database. There are some issues with the software. He couldn't speak to what happened in December. He was only going back through January. Um, and he told me that you are supposed to, and I don't know, you are supposed to sit with your daily tickets that, uh, that Lori has when you post the sales and compare the two of them to confirm that they are right. That's what, just what I thought, that's what they look like. Anyway, and um, do we have to go through each one of them? I have to. That's how I enter sales in the This system makes you, notes. it's like every day, like I was trying to say, every day is something work related. It's never a day off anymore. But you have to go in and post the sale after, say, an hour after the store closes or early the next morning. Anyway. They're supposed to match this. Every time I post the sales, they match the ticket. This is the clerk report. You know, this is what it's supposed to match. My numbers match. So well, somewhere on their end and their database, whatever he wants, they're having some kind of issue with the duplicated sales. But that's not anything that's my fault. You, that makes sense. So, so software. This is what I want you to Hardware do. issue. And, but I always make sure that it matches these. We do reports that Jackie gets. When you mm -hmm. go into that software, before mm -hmm. you hit post, I want you to print that screen okay. or take a picture of that okay. screen. And I want you to match it up to that mm -hmm. receipt. Okay. And then that way we can say it looks right on our end. They are supposed to come on Tuesday and re image the machine and supposedly fix this problem. He also explained to me, we went through a few other things. Um, he explained to me that he does think that Lori has access to be able to adjust the inventory. Um, and expressed that things were not set up accurately on both sides from the beginning. Um, and wanted to provide um, Lori some training this month and to help her figure out how to use the system. Um, Wake and Mecklenburg County do use Dalcom, but they use a Dynamics um, software that is way more expensive. Um, there are only fort, mm, 14 ABC boards in North Carolina who are using the TAG solution that we are using as a POS like, interface. Okay, um, So, he did tell me that there is real-time inventory on the cash register. I hope I Eric, Lori, and I talked about some, that some this morning. Um, and that I really wanted her, I want you to have your list of questions when he comes. Unfortunately, I can't be there. No, I, I, I have it. Um, um, uh, he, just so they know, he did come October 29th for training the same stuff he's going to do again. Um, I am really hoping that somebody else can be at the meeting with Lori maybe on the 10th. Todd, if you could be there, that would be amazing. Um, just because I, I, I would what like time is your opinion. What he time? has not said at the time. He just said early, and I said, I'm always there early, and I'm supposed to have the shit my day. 
So can mm -hmm. you reach out to him and ask him what time he'll be there tell him you're trying to get one of your board members there? Mm -hmm. Um do you have a preferred time? Um I have to be in Lewisburg at two thirty that day. Oh, if anybody else on my calendar so anything else mm -hmm. I should be able to make work mm -hmm. move around. Um he did explain to the UPC codes to me, so unlike the system you just saw multiple items can have the same UPC code in the software. And so that means that if there's 5,000 codes and you've got a UPC code attached to more than one item, it's going to go down the list and grab the first item that UPC code is attached to and that's the item it's going to run up to. So he did say that Lori's supposed to be able to adjust that UPC code and delete that. I do that, but there's over 6,000 items and can't foresee it happening until it happens. Yeah. So then you've already got an item that you don't even carry attaching to some random other state code. And that's where a lot of the inventory issues are coming from. And that's one reason why I was getting so frustrated with everything because as I was telling Jackie, I mean, since 94, my audits and especially inventory has been excellent. And I'm very much stressed about how so the other thing that they told me when, not this past time, but when other techs have gone in there to fix our sales, they're not freezing the inventory. So when they reverse out the sales, they're also reversing out the inventory. And Lori is going in and manually adjusting the inventory to be correct, and then they're reversing it out, which is just like causing... Uh, it, that's why I said I don't know if inventory is right or wrong. It, it that, that when sales go up a hundred thousand dollars and net and gross profit yeah, only goes I up mean, six thousand, that's causing a major problem. I I yeah, I mean um, that I just don't that why would they why would the code that we don't even care will show up with inventory that makes so uh, that's I think I'm gonna be deal. honest, what I just saw oh. is pretty sweet. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I'm not like, going to, I didn't get yeah. so excited about it. But <laughs> I mean, that looked very easy to use. I, Todd, I don't know if you had a chance to get into the POS system and play around. Yeah, but yeah I think, um, obviously, the, I think the presentation we got today is, is was much more clar clarity to how to do things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, from what Wesley said, um, Dowcom is the largest ABC vendor in the state. However, I think that there's a lot, I mean, if you add the eight number number stores, counties, like, mm -hmm. like when you add there. those two counties and those counties on the dynamic software, which is like $25,000, $50,000 to mm -hmm. run, because mm -hmm. I think he told me dynamics has even got all the accounting part in it. It's too. completely different and that's so, what Wayne County and all their stores use. Yes. So all of the larger stores are using a different interface. Definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like there were some things, and I don't know when it was communicated where he said we have to match up the numbers at the end of the day. I mean, that is a on us at the store to make sure we're catching, and I don't know when that was communicated to us, but that's Wesley feels like that's what's causing a lot of the reporting issues. Is, and at what, how we operate at Sheets, I mean, we have to verify it. sometimes the drawer closes with a zero balance or opens with a zero balance. It's just not accurate, and we have to and we have a service support desk that we log a call and say, hey, we need this adjusted, and they adjust it. The customer service has been awful from Dowcom. Um, I mean, I it wasn't until this February week. Like, 4th. I think it was yeah. February 4th, and it was, Whatever. you were waiting one or two weeks um, to get a reply. Um, the CEO finally did step in and said he's handling the internal issues with, with that because he wasn't made aware. Um, I don't know if this is a last-ditch effort, what it is. Um, I, I it was after he was made aware we were considering yeah. switching. He was at a different store. And they got and my email that store did where I was requesting to know what software yeah. they were using, what company, and if they were considering switching or if they were happy. And that's how he found out. That's when he started reaching out to us after yeah. we'd already been trying for... And how long have we been operating on Dowcom? And we've had 40, hang on, he told me how many tickets we had in the system. And that's just the tickets. They don't always create a ticket. He told me that every time you call in, there's supposed to be a Every time you emailed him back, there was a ticket generated. I got yeah, an email yeah. of an updated ticket. They call in a lot, mm -hmm. 
Um, and I, my concern is because he told me that um, they were that he was not seeing like EPC barcode issues um, and the tickets that were listed. And I know that you've had those. So he told me there were 48 tickets since October 1st. And I was like, does every time we call in, does that result in a ticket? And he said, yes. So Lori, for the meeting Tuesday, I'd like you to talk, try to come up with a list of every single benefit that you saw that SG had that you, you feel the outcome doesn't, and I really want you to put those in front of him with the focus that's there. I, I did let, well, I just, he claimed he has only talked to me a couple times. He's already talked to me twice in the past two weeks, but mm -hmm. that does not include all the times I've talked to him in October. Plus the twice times he's been down there where he said, well, you just don't know how to do the inventory correctly, and he would come down there. No, I think he's... Oh, I know. Well, I, was, I, was I want you to, to be I very prepared to for this meeting, so okay. I want you to have a list of everything that mm -hmm. SG has that you don't feel the outcome has, so you can put that in front of him and say, okay. I want to have this feature. Do you have it? There might be an education thing where we don't know how to use that yet. That's what I'm um, I want you to call him out on every single time you think you talked to him and say, here's the times that we talked to. So I want you to have record of that that we can you know that I can be there to support you with. Um, obviously your major issues with them. Um, and then I would hope that he could would I'll ask him to come in and basically do a presentation. I don't know if they presented to the board like that as so did last year. And he talked to me about not so he did not present to the board. Yeah. He did tell me that he is planning on coming to our next board meeting. Yeah. And he is hoping that all of the issues that we are having will be resolved by then. Now I will also let him know again on as I told him on the phone that it's 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 not that we don't know how to operate the system we do. It's not that complicated. It's just it is way more time consuming and involved than it needs to be. This is well, if we don't know all the I mean, you know, it's all it's benefits of it, yeah. and, and I don't think we do. Um, just the fact that I think we need him. You got to remember the guy that was just in here as a salesman. This guy sure. is a yeah. salesman. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we need to see here are the things that this stuff. competitor mm -hmm. is offering. <laughs> now, can we do it with the software? Um, by making a software purchase in October, I think it's you know I understand that this one's a lot better, but from a financial standpoint, I mean I, I think we need to try to see if this thing works. I understand it's a lot easier, but I think we need to see, hey, here's all the stuff SG offers. How do we get this with Alcom? Can we get this with Alcom? Um, I, I, it's a very bad business investment to purchase software twice in the same same year. So I think we need to, unfortunately, we made this decision a few months ago. I, I think we need to figure out what, if we can work with it. And, you know, I, I mean, I understand it's going to save a lot of time and money, possibly, but we also don't know that what, I don't think we've done our research on Dalcom of what they can do for us. Um, I think now that we have a web direct contact with Wesley, it should improve. I think now that he knows we're looking for another vendor, they're going to try harder to keep us. So I do think it's worth hearing them out. And you know, I, I, I would advise jumping on this other one right away before we see what they have to offer. Just my, my opinion on it. Okay. Guys, I appreciate the uh, work that y'all did. We made a motion in last month's meeting that um, that we try to get the gentleman in here and then at least one or two board members meet with them. It sounds like y'all are doing exactly what uh, the board asked you to do, so I appreciate that. Uh, the only other comment that I would have is if we have a contract with Alcom, do you know where it is? Do, do we, have we do not have a contract. It's a, it's a user software contract. basically saying we can't do such and such with their software. Well, if we have no contract, then we can get out at any time. Can yeah, we, we just that? paid. I mean, he when I talked to Wesley, he was like, he told me he was going to give me a couple months of fees, which are ninety nine dollars a month, I think, free. Um, and but he didn't make it sound like there was any contract that we were stuck in that couldn't get out of. So. Well, can we, we just pay a to user? list of questions mm -hmm. for the meeting to make sure that isn't isn't the other one. And it's about just one thing that they do. I don't, I don't know. Because it, it's part of what we just did, with it was, there's a lot of lump sums in there, so I'm not yeah. sure if they're like one time setup fees or. He said it was just one year, one year in the bank, that's the name, instead of every month. How do we get invoice from Dalcom? Is that, do they just send you a? It's paper. 
and it's monthly. A monthly there, fee they build us up front. I think for an annual cost, and then um, they're yeah, sending us like. Payment. Yeah, and there's a monthly payment. And then there's a monthly $99. And I'm assuming that one-time payment was the bulk of the cost there? Yes. So we've got we had a credit licensing and professional services fee back in October. Then they had POS set up and configuration. Annual help desk is $1,200. And then all the POS fees are $99.99 a month. So Based upon what you just said, you're saying that every year we're going to have to pay twelve hundred dollars plus ninety nine ninety nine a month. Mm -hmm. Well, if we can exit the contract without owing them any money, that's that's good. All right. Well, we look we look forward to hearing y'all's report. Did y'all want his presentation to be the same? Have it first thing. So that he can be out before we have our conversation later. Yeah, okay, I'll get it set up that way. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, going forward, if whatever we consider, in fact, I think, you know, we make that decision to coincide. If we, if we make changes going forward, that we make coincide with, if we move into the new location, if that's the realm we're going, we should do it at that point in time so that we're not setting up a system at this store just to move it a month so or two later. So there, SG will use our current cash registers. He's just going to put new software on it. So mm -hmm. Part of the reason why I asked him, because he told me he needed a server on site, is part of the reason why I asked him if that was an extra fee, because we don't have a server on site. And he told me that they would put a server in. Yeah. So. It wouldn't be a huge disruption. It's more of a software thing than it is a hardware thing. He said he can go in at any time and upgrade and just pull the files over. It's no big deal. Okay. Next item is uh, uniforms. Who's heading that up? Yeah, Danny. Well, we had the proposals for, um, with the, the badges. Yeah that Phil shared with us and we were taking a look at those. Um, do we have... Emily's got the shirt on. Yeah. And that, that's yeah. one of the young the shirts and stuff but with the ABC board. Do you have a preference as, as far as the logo and how we're doing the badge? Um, can we get a motion on which I, one we... Well, I don't like the ones with the white stripe on it. And Lori brought up an issue. She said uh, that the, if it's a lighter color, or that they get dirty. And I have a suggestion for that: that we also include an apron, so that they can put an, uh, like a, a duck uh, cloth type apron, so they can wear that when they're doing. So we, we can't just do black or dark blue because it's hot. We have no air in the warehouse. I mean, we do already have aprons to protect our clothes. Yeah. But it's so hot, nobody wants to wear them. I mean, we're talking 90 degrees in the warehouse. We have no air or anything in there. I don't, uh, I think, I don't know what the big deal is about whether you have black or dark blue or or some other burgundy like she has on or, or, or a choice between those three colors. I mean, I'm just, or a dark charcoal gray as opposed to, I mean, I'm just asking them. There's no, I mean, we just need to be consistent, but as far as the color choice, I mean, obviously we need to take that into consideration. Um, but, um, and it, going forward also, you know, if we're moving the plan that we're going to the facility, we're going to have the AC and the heating and stuff throughout the store and not, yeah. so, um, but I'll let you go. Well, I, I don't, I think a dark color is great. I think navy looks very sharp, especially with a khaki pants, which I think would be a good looking uniform. And I, and we still want them to have a tag on. Right. Like first name only. Oh, the, uh, the only, the, I think I brought up one of the employees. She kind of went around, the, she didn't get to the point. I asked her again after that particular meeting we had what exactly was the issue. And it's, it's the way her name is, that people pronounce it desire instead of Desiree and she hates that. So I, I said, we'll call you D. Yeah, <laughs> or something. Yeah. If people want to call me Mary. 
So, I mean, that's something she has to deal with. So, uh, we can help that. Uh, we can maybe make them do the, the apostrophe on the back of it, if, if she, that's how she writes it. No, I'm just saying it's just something for her to pronounce. Well, uh, yeah, that, that was her only thing. She said it's very... People have a tendency to get crude with it. When they look at the yes, desires, they have a tendency to, to get... It, they take it as an opening to get crude. And it, that's... Yeah. That's a it's a failing on the person that's just that's anger for one thing, yeah. <laughs> but um, I was going to say it's a failure on the person that's you know commenting on it yes. as well. Um, it's just rude and they shouldn't. But um, some people just look at a name tag or something, not necessarily a name tag, but look at it and say, hey, that's an opening to, to say whatever I want. But that's I think I can see. Yeah. <laughs> I would think any. Uh, I would just say any non. You know, if it's not there given name that we the board approves any nickname whether it's D whether it's Des you know, I however we want to do that, that. You that you know, um, yeah. no problem I would just say that that's a random process as long as it's not you know if it's not their given name what I liked about this book this one has a um, it's cool and dry stain release so don't we have a, oh see the, oh, yeah. the red the one this, the side the, the red one, one has stain release yeah, I, like the, I, I like the color I like the button I like I think that looks very professional and then this one here, the, um, the, because of the same release, really, so if you're sweating, you don't be wearing it without a t shirt and stuff. It's yeah. not going to have the same yeah. yeah. arms and stuff. This one was $39.99 each. Um, and it, you know, we can get it in other colors than just the gray. I think maybe blue would be great. So if we do the blue, keep in mind we're going to have to change the. So the lettering, yeah, um, because that blue will fade, yeah, and you'll have to figure out a different yeah. way to do the lettering. The, the colors that were chosen here were based on the logo. I, there weren't really any other colors that worked well with the logo's colors. So like a blue, like you couldn't see the young blue word at all. Um, oh, okay. But we can certainly modify the logo if you'd like to. But you know, just be aware that that's part of the discussion. I can see why it wouldn't show. Yeah, I think that's a good So is there an action? Uh, so. The, Today. Can we, um, Phil, is there a way that we could get a sample of, or another picture of this within a darker charcoal type gray with our logo? Yeah, absolutely. So you just want, uh, just let me know what your preferences are so I can do a darker gray or any other colors that might be helpful for you to see. Well, and what you can, if we can do the, the navy like they're asking for just so that they can see how it's you know the, the blend so it's not going to stand out so well and yeah. then if we can get uh i'm because i was actually thinking of a darker charcoal gray a little bit darker than what's on on the picture and this may end up being a little darker in in person but um just so that we can see what this moves forward and then um if you'll share that via email with us and then we'll um move forward with the uh, a firm item at the April meeting. Well, can I can I ask a question then? Can, sure. can we not go ahead and take action on whether we want to do the shirts and then just leave it up to you all to select the colors? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Have you guys discussed how many shirts per employee or is that right. how we're gonna figure out how many to distribute to each person? How many shifts do you like part time people work a week? Um, it would probably be something we need to consider how many you know we need to buy. And and that's what I, we had to previously discussed that the part time people would only get one starting off unless their schedule increased. There's um, seven part time. Okay. You think two is a reasonable number for a part time employee? Two shirts. Yeah. Yeah. One. I think one was stretched thinking them. I am not stretching. <laughs> do you have? Do they? Do you have people that may only work like one day a week or that type of thing? Well, yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that'd probably be like one trip for her or something. I mean, you know, those that are only working one day a week. Um, yeah. That's yeah, but if they work on Friday. What writing of how we determine how many, especially if we have a new employee, how many shirts do they get, how many hours are they going to be working? Obviously, the full time, you know, we're going to get them more and part time less. But right. We, I think somewhere there we have to have it spelled out of what's how the, many good What's the them. minimum in of employee work? The mm -hmm. number of hours. The minimum number is uh, 15. Okay, 20. Uh, occasionally there's one that might work um, eight hours and a week. 
I think you need to be careful if they work like Friday night and then they work Saturday. You don't need to make them do laundry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what saying. Well, we usually, whoever works Friday night, unless there's some major thing, they do not work Saturday. Mm -hmm. See, that looks really good right there on that color. It's hard to see the blue, though. Right. Change the young school to red, maybe, on the navy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, you see down, at the, like, at the bottom of the Y, once it's coming outside the state, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, or could you make this, this, this stuff? I think if, in order to use a navy, you would want to use a different color for the young I mean, I could use that Youngsville script, you know, red um, with a blue star maybe. Yeah, uh, that yeah, might be okay. I can that shoot that. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'd make ABC red too. Bro. Yeah, the ABC as well. So those are some of the Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can that'll take a little bit what? more effort, but I can throw them in the elbow that after Oh, I thought they were going to wish to have to use those guys. No. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So do we want to make a motion in regards to actual using these shirts for the store and then we'll get together with Lori and determine the number and her colors? Yeah. And like I said, do we also want to recommend uh, a specific color payment? So we're going to ask them to it as well. So we can avoid uh, a gene or that's, right. that's already in our drug policy. I said, I sent somebody home that we recently hired and didn't realize it yesterday. What, what, is, pants. The, what is the drug policy? They can wear pants, jeans. They cannot wear any holes. They have to fit properly. Um, be neat, be neat looking jeans because, or they can wear they can wear any kind of pants as long as they are not holes, holes, and they're professional looking. I mean, as far as you know, not being afraid and always looking as long as because of all the lifting and the you know just the stocking and everything we do a lot of, you know if they want to wear khakis they can wear khakis but as long as they're neat and whatever else and okay. that's kind of i really hope that y'all keep the pants like this <laughs> um, yeah especially for a part-time employee i hate to make them go out and buy new pants if if they look nice, I know that was a yeah. big push for us when we changed uniforms. Is we got a lot of pushback of when I have to go buy, you know, this or that. Yes, so that's all yeah. up I bet. I mean, there there is a policy already in, in effect that no holes, anything like that. I no, no marking. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm okay I'm with you know. I'm okay with leaving the pant policy like that because it is warehouse. They are going to be doing lifting and moving boxes and stuff. And you do have part time people, and it's not like they're getting huge yeah. check. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and and so you, would you like to make a motion then to uh, purchase two shirts per employee? Two per, uh, two per employee and uh, Did three. Did you want to phrase it up to two per part time? That way if someone's only working one day a week they can get yeah. 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 Just do one up to two. Up to, up to two, up to two. And uh, three for manage uh, full time employees who work in five days a week. Yes. We could probably set it up where they could purchase more if they wanted to. Yes. Right. Yeah, if they want to buy more on their own, they can. And I like the navy blue, but you want the open collar, like hers for the women, and the button up for the men. Well, I, I guess what I'm asking is, um, if, if, like, let's say we wanted to buy one with the buttons up, a button up, and then we wanted to buy one like that. I mean, like, if we could have up to three shirts, could we choose have a have different choose style? Have several options. Right. Um, and even uh, a friend of mine came here and she had. Um, you sorry, can go to this website and you can choose any shirt you want. They have lots of men's and women's styles. Just send me some options via email and just you know with the links uh -huh. and I can you know, rejigger or redesign the logo to, to suit what your preferences are as far as style and color. Yeah that's that's what I was trying to find out if we were going to be allowed to choose different styles or we had to have a specific style. How about I, mean, we I, I think that management and the board can decide together a uh, <coughs> variety uh, and, and that employees might have a list from you. I, don't, I wouldn't want every employee to just go on there and 
Right. Use their own. So I'm just going to say, no, they we're going to do a couple of styles and everything. Right, that's, I was, yeah, that's what I was, yeah, that's what I was meaning, like, us, go ahead and, yeah, say, okay, we can pick from these two styles. Yes. And, like, yeah, I think that, that would be better. Well, what, what, why don't we set it to where, we make a motion to get with Lori to choose up to no more than three styles mm -hmm. and uh, for women and two for men uh, and allow them to choose mm -hmm. from going forward uh, when, they, when they place the order and then um, well at that point in time we'll have the designated color um, if we're going to do the navy with the red signage and then, and then tar the charcoal gray with the other, uh, with the, our normal logo. I think we should need to just stick to one color. I, I don't think, if we're going to do this, I, I, want, I like the consistency of one color. I mean, this just means that. Well, I mean, I personally think we should have three colors to choose from, black, navy, and charcoal. I think it would be nice <laughs> it does. It's a uniform. So that's why I like just one color, everybody's in the same color. When you walk in the door, the customer knows the guy in the navy shirt works in the store. Even if they see even if they see your back. You know. That's what I like. Name about. Bags too, so I mean they have the logo. But that's um that's all like the uh, Todd, do you allow for different or is Yeah, we have a few different, uh, like our managers, they can pick from a, like a salmon or a gray. Um, our, our team members, I think we have black and um, red for them to choose from. Um, so I think by position, we, and we have different uniforms for each job class, so it's a little different, but um, okay. we, we do have, have color options. We buy water as well. <coughs> Setting my objection. All right, so we have okay. a motion. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I might say whatever you guys come up with. Let's just incorporate it into the existing dress code that you have now. Yeah. So yeah. it's clear going forward. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Outside of that, too, just a quick comment that's heard down the road. When do you replace shirts? How often do you get new shirts? Like we do it every year on their anniversary day, or you know, however we want to figure that out. That's obviously very far down the road, but something that we'll have to come up with how often we repurchase shirts for employees. Yeah, our bank gives everybody uh, money to buy one shirt every year. Yeah, and that gives them an opportunity if they only have one, you know, then they can add it, you know, the additional one each year when they put their anniversary date. You. And we used to do it, you know, set a designated month. We would say, you know, every December, you know, that's when we would do our shirt or whatever that day. It's no one. If they've had it in their year, if not, then it would be the follow. But we'll update that in the policy going forward. Okay. You just also haven't set up, say, say we had a new hire or a part time employee, and then automatically they get two shirts or something, have one shirt, and after they've been there six months or so, then. You know, okay, well, you're going to actually stay, so we'll do the, you know, the second shirt. <coughs> okay, is there any new business? All right, we'll go to the reports next. Mary Margaret, do you have anything? I don't. Todd? No. I, have, I do have a question for Lori, though. Mm -hmm. How are you tracking your, your uh, employees coming out? What, what they, they, clock in? they have a specific schedule, and then um, if there's any changes, they have it's wrote down and it's um, observed by the other person there. Like they're not, they're not writing um, in a book or, or a time clock or anything that they, what time they come and go? We keep a specific calendar for that. Like if there is something different. So it's all on, a, on an honesty level. Right, basically. but but there's yeah. also, there's camera and there's other people. Nobody is ever alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well I know. Yeah. So it's like you get, somebody can't just make up their time, you know. And I'm always there early in the morning. I mean, I'm there before anybody gets there, and you know, things like that. So okay. we haven't had an issue. Yeah, but I just wondered. Yeah. Okay. Tom. Yeah. No. All good. Danny. No. 
Uh, I'll make uh, one comment. Uh, how does everybody feel about the new logo signs on the windows? Looks great. Good job mm -hmm. with that. I'd like to uh, uh, suggest, Laurie, if you could maybe uh, move that exit sign that's on the exit door, on the inside exit door, okay. up above the door. That's where it was. I don't know who moved. I don't yeah. know who I think moved that would it. look it, nice okay. if you took it off the glass. I, I noticed it was, I, I guess he moved it or something because it was above the door. No, actually, uh, or he asked me whether I had a, that whether he should take it down when I was there and I said no let's leave it there and let, let's talk to Lori about it because I'm happy. Yeah it was above the door and I prefer it above the door okay. anyway so right. yeah I can yeah. And then that other um, there's one other thing on the exit door too is that to do with the survey customer survey? Yeah I was told that I had to post it. I, mean, I can remove it and, but that's the only door where people actually nobody takes time to read it anyway but what? I can remove it and I do think it's I mean, when I come by Tuesday, maybe we can rewrite it. It's because I'd write it. I, I was looking for it when I came in one day. You know, the survey information. Mm -hmm. and I saw it at the door, but there's just so much tied into that. Okay. I think we just need three. You know, feedback, suggestions, Comments. recommendations. Yeah. Here's okay. the email. So okay. we'll, okay. maybe we can redo that I when I come in when I come in Tuesday. I can. I'll have to redo that for it all because I'm already. We'll be very busy Tuesday with the show my So that's going to be going on. That they were being with that guy, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Jack, you have anything? Emily? Mm -hmm. uh, great job on the minutes again. Thank you. Bill, do you have anything? Um, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Did, did we decide we wanted to proceed with these name tags? Or I, I, I think I maybe said that there was a position on that. Yes, we do want name tags. Do you like that color? Is the one that was in the one, the yes, one. Do you want to make any additional modifications? No, I don't. There's no there's no changes. That I'm no way. Do you want to wait until you figure out the colors on your shirts before you decide on a name tag? Because if you get maroon, red, and maroon are not. That's not gonna look. Yeah, I never had a light background on the tag. Yeah, yeah but if yeah, they generally the, the, the design is really kind of what I was getting trying to get confirmation on. We can oh, work with the colors. The but. design's great. Okay, great. Thank you. That was all I had. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. And we have an option now to go into closed session. Does anyone have any comments on whether we uh, uh, go into closed session or since Sam's not here, perhaps just go without? Anything that we need to follow up on from the last one? Okay. Okay, good. All right. Well, if there's no other comments, uh, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everybody.